1995. It was a simpler time. Who here remembers 1995? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Before annualized sequels and video games that felt like work, the PlayStation 1 reigned supreme. It was a time when new ideas in video games were celebrated and also rewarded. It was a time that gave us some of the most legendary video games and iconic characters of all time. We're talking the likes of Resident Evil, Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy VII, Dino Crisis, Lara Croft, Crash Bandicoot, and so many more. Every new game you played was a genuine new adventure. Even the sequels back then tried to be different. When a game was reviewed, the reviewer would tell you what the game was actually like, instead of telling you what other games it's like. Neo owes a lot to Dark Souls. Combat and exploration of a lightened up Dark Souls. Do a Dark Souls, but make it anime. But then, the dark times came. Profit started to matter more than new ideas and furthering the industry, and now new ideas happen so rarely in AAA games, that it hurts them so much more when not everybody gets it. Eyes open, dumbass. Fortunately, between those early times and these dark times, something amazing happened, and that something was Minecraft. Minecraft looks so basic, but it was actually genius. Super simple graphics allowed for enormous worlds that were so deep and so complex, and they allowed for so much experimentation too. Minecraft was a stress outlet for adults and a creativity outlet for children. It became an internet sensation and it still is today. Heck, even the grown-ups use it now for city planning and architecture. Minecraft proved that originality still mattered and that it could be an even bigger success than the copy and paste annual franchises we were starting to see at that time. Indie games are a much bigger part of the gaming scene now. The tools required to make them are more easily available, and the games are very popular due to their price. Full price AAA games have now reached a price point where they can be paid for with installment plans. No, really. Indie games, however, usually cost less than a McDonald's, and there are tons of them on Games Pass and PS Plus as well. Now, I will be the first to admit that sometimes these games are awful. <coughs> but a lot of them do manage to recapture that magic, that sweet spot of a new idea and a new adventure, through a combination of being simple but also original and actually really good. Let's look at one of the simplest examples I have found, that just so happens to now be one of my favourites. Johnny Trigger is literally a point and click game. Actually no, it's not even that, you just have to click. But it is also super satisfying in its simplicity. And it is very hard to put down a game where you unlock something every 8 seconds. You start out looking like the dude from Hitman, but soon you can be Chuck Norris with Robocop's pistols, or Daft Punk with a Polkadot SMG. See also Lara Croft, Die Hard, and the cast of X-Men. You also have a multi-tiered hideout to upgrade, and each new level grants new costumes and weapons. We're talking the likes of Batman, Halo, and Rick and Morty. Johnny Trigger is such a simple idea, but it is executed with so much precision and heart, even though you can play it with one hand, which I do, almost every morning, whilst my other hand holds my coffee. Yeah, if you thought I was going somewhere else with that, then you, my friend, are on the wrong video website. Now, imagine an old-school, top-down, Zelda-type Dungeon & Towns adventure game, where your character can be a mighty paladin or a noble archer, but by far the most overpowered form you can take is a rat. Now imagine the same thing again, but you're a magic-wielding cat partnered with a dog. Imagine Dark Souls, but with quest markers, and it looks like a college art project. 
Imagine a world where humans are gone and you're in a closed off dystopian city. There's a few robots and the little critters from Half-Life too. Not interesting enough. Okay, how about if we make you a cat? Oh, and through the miracle of haptic feedback, your PS5 controller will purr. Somewhere between watching people clean rugs on YouTube and actually getting out your own jet washer, you can instead just do it digitally. Cleaning everything from a penny farthing to a fire truck. And for a little extra, you can clean Lara Croft's outdoor gym, SpongeBob's house, or the freaking DeLorean. Did you know that if you take the word simulator and put it next to pretty much anything now, there's a good chance there's a game for it. Trams, farming, cooking, construction, police, surgery, insults, bus driving, bees, job, World War II bunker, train station, train life, metro trains, prison. Wait what? What is a marketable prison experience anyway? At this point, new ideas in indie games are bordering on the random and the ridiculous. Ridiculous! And I am 100% here for it. You can repair a power station, but it's on the moon. You can run a post office using two tiny birds. You can guide a human from A to B, but they don't have a skeleton. You can play Cyberpunk, but it's in 2D and it will actually run on a PS4. You can play Streets of Rage, but also relive your early 20s, because you're the cast of Scott Pilgrim. You can be a public nuisance, but also a goose. And you can do the wagon from Skyrim, but you're a goat. Also, you can rear sheep, I guess. No. Indie games are enjoying a very well-earned renaissance right now, not just because they are cheap and original, but because they are so accessible too. It doesn't matter what the mechanics of the game are, they will be made well enough that you'll be able to figure them out. Most of the time, anyway. Indie games are helping us to rediscover the joy of wholly new gaming experiences. In a sea of bloated games that launch with bugs and turn children into gambling addicts, indie games are the raft that will take us to safety, whilst we continue to wait for the big kids in the playground to get their shit together. You never see it coming.